going to turn it over to William Riley. He's going to talk about how not to be a victim and criminal behavior profiling. And then he's going to stop at like 11.25 and he'll, he'll uh, answer questions. Okay? Thank you. As I said, I'm still active, so don't misbehave in front. <laughs> the, um, the function that I'm going to talk about is if you understand how crime works, once it starts, it's too late. You want to be away from the crime scene. So what I'm going to talk about is how you stay away from the crime scene. Criminals reconnoiter or surveil their uh, place of operation, always. They, that's part of every criminal's behavior. So what you have to do is recognize that someone is performing that behavior. Now, how hard is it? Well, I've said for the past few years that I can teach five-year-olds how to do this. I've had to change my statement because I found out that six-month-old babies can do it. Of course, there we have to teach the parents. So I'm, I could take uh, probably four hours to do this, but I'm going to do it in 20 minutes, and then if you have questions or if you want to know more, I have a book that's available. But the first one I call three seconds to safety. What does that mean? It means that you've got three seconds to tell that someone is preparing for criminal behavior. What is three seconds? One, two, three. That's it. That's how long it takes. Now I'm going to give you an example. What is she doing? She's taking a picture. You said that immediately. You didn't take three seconds. Next time, pause, wait, give me three seconds. <laughs> no, three seconds is all it takes. Now, if you look at someone and you cannot tell me in three seconds what they're doing, you better go the other way because they're up to no good. That's the first rule. Now, everything else is explanation. So what we're going to do is talk about how other detection is done. Because you've been doing this all your life. You just did not understand why it works. You didn't have particular education in the background for it. So let's tell you first of all, how many of you all watched those old movies? What was James Cagney's line? I smell a rat. Why do you suppose he used that term? Well, there are two sweat systems in the humans and in many other animals, but humans are the ones that commit the crimes. We have the basic one that starts at birth, which is the ecrine sweat. That doesn't smell bad. That's why they don't have showers in grade school. Kids can sweat all day long and they won't smell bad unless they've been rolling in something. So what happens at puberty is the apocrine sweat system comes into play. Apocrine sweat decomposes and smells bad. So what causes that sweat is the adrenal system. Now, fear or stress and criminals may be very brave about some things, but they're always afraid of being caught. And that releases the adrenaline. So for criminals, they always smell a little bad. And I've had it in the reverse. I've had people tell me, are you a policeman? And I said, yes. And I'd say, how did you know? And it just smelled right. <laughs> now, the Normal knowledge system for criminal behavior is that dogs can find criminals, right? Who knows how that works? Well, it's the sweat system again. Dogs have ecrine and epicrine sweat, but theirs is the reverse. Their heat sweat is epicrine. That's why they always smell a little doggy. So 
the criminals smell like the dogs. What does the dog do when he sees another dog? So actually, that's how they tag criminals. So we have the physical part of sensing criminals. There's a few other things that I'm going to tell you about. The first one is that predators all behave alike. They go out looking for prey. You've watched all those Animal Planet movies. they got one prairie dog that stands up and watches for everybody. And when he gives a signal, they're all gone. You have to be like that prairie dog alarm system. And you have to keep alert. So the uh, criminals are predators. And they're always looking for some business. Policemen are super predators. We're the ones looking for them. So how do we find them? Besides what I've already told you. Most policemen use the same principles that I talked to you about, but nobody ever taught them. They just learned it coming up through the ranks. There are very few criminal behavior profiling specialists in the world, and very few of them know how to talk to ordinary people. <laughs> they talk to college students. So hyper-awareness is the first key. Predators not only have to watch for the prey, but they have to watch for the ones preying on them. So if someone is constantly looking around to see what's happening, it's a bad sign. I caught one guy, didn't match the description, his vehicle didn't match the description, but he turned around to see who was following him. And that was the key. I knew immediately it was the right person, so we sent a troop after him. So anybody that's being especially alert has some reason to do that. Now there's another one, and this is another one of those uh, phrases from the movies. A little shifty, huh? Well, what does that word shifty refer to? It refers to the eyes. The eyes keep looking around, they shift. Next time you go to a sports event, I'm going to have you check something. You can look across the stadium and tell if somebody's looking at you. Try it. I'm sure some of you have done it. Well, if someone's looking at you, and they're not a family, friend, or acquaintance, they're looking to see if you're prey. And it's time to be watchful of what they're doing. If there's any question about it, get out of there. Um, who knows what this is? I'll give you this. Go ahead and ask your question. You know, people look at people, but that doesn't, I can look at you, maybe I'm looking at this cup that she's got on. Right. That's going to be obvious. The quick glance, yes, that's nice, but I'm talking about watching. Anything beyond the casual glance. Um, okay, now I did. I was talking about the eyes. Who knows what this is? Nobody. This is what I wear when I'm in civilian areas, but still on duty. That's a handcuff case. If you've ever been handcuffed, you know what's in there. So. I'm watching to see who looks at the case. And I'll be able to tell if they recognize it right away. So it's a test. There's a lot of tests that we use. And one of them and one of them is what do they look at? Did somebody have a question? Okay. People and predators especially look at what they're interested in. So if somebody's looking at your watch, if you're a storekeeper and someone wants to see what's in your till, they'll ask for change. Who needs change today? There's no parking meters or at least none that you couldn't pay. If you're in a store, you're there to buy something. 
if you're not buying something, you better have your hand near the alarm button. Because I was present when that happened the last time. The uh, eye contact, just keep an eye on what people look at because that's what they want. And that does apply even if you're just saying you like it. <laughs> you're, you're alert and aware. Now that's going to bring up, uh, I, when I did this uh, seminar before, I recommended that people with any kind of handicap, now I'm not talking serious handicap, I'm talking just maybe they are a little hard of hearing or don't have perfect vision. Criminals do a risk-reward risk analysis. How much benefit am I going to get for how much work? And I will tell you this, two people are always a harder target than one. So the first rule is if you can, at least travel in pairs. One of them said, my mother is independent. She doesn't want to have anybody help her. I said, okay, tell her she's helping them. So there are ways around it. The personal space part. Now, this is also profiling. If someone is in your personal space, you should be very edgy. Say she's moving. She doesn't know what's going on. Personal space varies with the culture. In our culture, you don't get very close to people unless you're already friends. And even then, <laughs> a little touchy. We also talk about the path to crime. Criminals are not looking to work hard. They want the easy jobs. So the one thing that helps a criminal in his endeavors to get prey is to watch for patterns. Someone does the same thing the same time every day or on a reliable and regular basis. The carjacking that occurred where the fellow was beaten and his legs broke. The perpetrator was in the house next to that gas station. And he probably stopped there every three days or some, some sort of a system, you know. If you're going to go after something of value, you're gonna learn when and where is the best place. So those are some of the basic principles. The um, broken window theory approaches this. If property is well taken care of, there's less of a chance that it's gonna be the scene of a crime. You can verify this yourself. If you just look around, neighborhoods attract criminals or repel criminals. Those uh, neighborhood watch signs don't help unless they're real. So if you've got a neighborhood watch sign, make sure you get involved. And don't be afraid to report suspicious behavior. This is why I said the three seconds to safety. I don't want you going in to get involved. I just want to know that there is a bit of a suspicion because we can do that. We can take care of it. Your job is to get to safety. Then you can go home and watch television. If I get into a real serious problem, the prosecuting attorney is going to be my lawyer. <laughs> so I'm ready. I had three tours in Vietnam, so I'm ready. The um, types of criminals, there are, uh, these are my notes on crime and criminals. Criminals are predators and generally divide into active or stalking criminals or passive ambush styles. And some may use bait. Well, I did a survey for these types of seminars. You can cut your crime rate in half in any city, in any territory, if people will simply lock their doors, their cars, their belongings. <coughs> there is a system that we use to analyze crime called attractive nuisances. 
no one's going to break into your house unless they think there's something in there that's worth taking. So by all means, you don't have to keep everything in a safety deposit box, but you should not present the appearance of value to those people that wish to prey on you. And this behavior system, I talk about in the book in great detail, but I'm almost done here for the, this time until we get some answers. But I'm just going to say, if you see somebody in your neighborhood walking around and they're not walking in a straight line and you know that they're going to and from someplace, call the police department and tell them. Because that's predatory behavior. Now I know that we've got a few minutes. Let me stop and see if we have, oh, a couple of things. There's a deputy badge sticker on each table from my friend Mark Hackle. He's no longer the sheriff, so I figured I could give these out. Those are for your kids or for you. There's one on each table. I only had seven. Um, I have my cards up here. You're welcome to send me email questions. If it's urgent, you can call me. I'm also the dealer for electric police vehicles. This is Ferndale's test drive of the uh, light patrol vehicle. But I'm just saying you don't have to finish here. I can be reached with questions. But is there anybody with a question at this time? Oh, I've taught you everything you know. There'll be a quiz now. <laughs> this is not a question. Um, just what you say about people, you know, I have friends that were at the bank and she was getting ready to get out with his car pulled up and he's, one guy got out and the other one got in. She told her husband, she says, call the police right now. Yeah. It's going to be robbed. And it was robbed. Right. This is, this is what I mean. If if anything looks funny, see, you've already got the senses. We call them the five senses, but the sum of them is that sense that this is not right. It's time to tell me. I don't mind getting a call ten times a day if I can stop one crime. So, by all means, anything that you don't understand or looks suspicious in any way, shape, or form, what you have to do is use the right terminology. You can't just say, oh, I'm, I'm scared. You have to explain that this person is crossing the street three times. No one in their right mind crosses the street three times. People are too lazy. They want to get here, go there. So when you see people that are not doing the simple, ordinary thing, that's when you get worried. Now, I've had um, if the, any more questions, because I've got one thing I want to talk about as far as defense goes. Uh, yes. Basically, what you said when you talk about tracking dogs is that the dogs are tracking sweat. Uh, than there's, they're tracking specific scents, but the tagging of a person as a suspicious person is almost always started with the sweat process. Okay. Uh, I don't want you to get into trouble. Believe me, <laughs> as practiced as I am, it's still not easy to defeat a criminal. This is pepper spray. Doesn't work on everybody. For me, it's a condiment. But it is, it's a condiment. It's pepper. It's a, oh. I'm serious. <laughs> I eat a lot of peppers. <laughs> but the, uh, um, the other thing is we've been through a lot of discussions about open carry. And I know that the law allows you to carry a weapon unconcealed, but I think it's putting out a public display where the weapon is. If somebody tries to mess with me, they're going to be real surprised where the weapon comes from. So I do not recommend it. And in defense of your home, yes. But out in public, you're better off to stay away from crime because as soon as you get involved, totally innocent, except that you were in the middle. You're going to be at risk of jail. You're going to be at risk of going to court. And it isn't always a good experience. <laughs>
So any anything that anybody has for me? As I say, you, you're welcome to have my cards. If you're interested in the book, it's on Kindle, it's on Google Play, and iBooks. So the book is. Yes. Many of us seniors are walkers. How do we defend ourselves when we're walking? Um, if you follow the Sean Penn movie from a few years ago, he was in prison with a problem from the population, and he filled a, a, a pillowcase with some pop cans <laughs> and got ready to wallop them. Most of you carry a purse. doesn't have to have a wallet in it. No, we don't. Now, when you're walking, you don't carry. Okay, that's good. But you can carry a can. <laughs> I have been. Actually, I'm glad you brought that up because the walking behavior that I keep seeing is people, you need to keep your eyes open, you need to keep your ears open, and if you're alert, they're not going to mess with you. But if you're doing this, that's the mark of prey. You've got to be in charge. Because then they, there's, they'd rather pick on someone else. It's, what's that old phrase? You don't have to outrun the bear, you have to outrun your friends. <laughs> Actually, uh, there's a lot of truth to that. I said I was in Vietnam. Our job was to be disposed of by the incoming missile and let the carrier get away. Now, I didn't tell the captain that, but that's what our job was. And it was my job to push the button because it made it look like a big target. So don't become a target and keep your alert system going. And carry your cell phone and have the police 911 on speed dial. Now don't call 911 with your suspicions. Call the regular number, so have them both. Any other questions? Yes? Well, I have some of the information here, but they've relaxed it quite a bit. This is the police version, and it differs from what you can carry mostly by the amount. <laughs> but you know what? If you don't want to spend the money, carry some pepper. I'm talking those hot peppers. The, the powder into the eyes. And your cane may not be, I mean, I, I try not to get into the self-defense system as much as I could simply because I want you to be away from it before it gets to that point. But if it does get to that point, all the holes are off and you can do anything you want. <laughs> you will, I know what you're going to do. <laughs> I can tell. Well, I thank you very much. You've been a great audience. And if you're interested, you can email me. I'll send you a link to the book. And there is another video presentation that's on YouTube. It's got over, I think we're almost to 1,000 views for that one. Let me get down again. OK, go ahead. Don't forget that women can be very criminal, too. Ah, that's true. And you know, you got it's true. that, you know, because that you can think of just another woman, you know. And um, the thing that made the Vietnam War and the Gulf War and all the rest of those so bad for the soldiers is that in previous wars, you could tell someone was the enemy when they were wearing a uniform. Gulf War, women, children, anybody. So don't. I mean, the, a lot of the scam artists are in the senior group, not this group. <laughs> okay, good, good point. Anybody else? Well, you'll turn you over to uh, Jeannie. Thank you.